On Larry King Now, Yolanda Hadid. I wasn't interested in making just another model show because I think Tyra Banks, you know, did that really great. But I wanted to do a show about the relationship of mothers and daughters. So what advice do you give to the mothers? To, to learn to step back and allow them to be authentic to who they are. When did you realize your daughters were destined to be models? Gigi just had that, you know, that thing. She would stare me right into the camera. I couldn't take a, a picture, a bad picture of her. So I kind of always knew that was Gigi's destiny. We share one thing, we lost our father at a young age. And I remember sitting at the church and seeing my mom and my brother, my family all in tears. I, in that moment, made the choice I'm like, okay, I'm the one that has to be tough and strong to take care of all of them. And I took on this huge responsibility at age seven. Plus, what's something people get wrong about you? I think that they think I'm much more fancy than I really are. Deep in my heart, I'm just a farm girl from Holland and that's where I feel happiest and best. All next on Larry King Now. Welcome to Larry King Now. Our guest today is Yolanda Hadid, the Real Housewives of Beverly Hills alum, mom and manager to her supermodel kids, Gigi Bella and Anwar, and a former model herself. And she's now at the helm of her own show called Making a Model with Yolanda Hadid. It airs Thursdays at 10 p.m. 9 central on Lifetime. So tell me about this show. How did it come about? Well, I kind of quit the, the housewife show and took a break for a while and um, then I got an offer to go into Lifetime and, and have a meeting about a new show and um, it just felt right to me. Like I wasn't interested in making just another model show because I think Tyra Banks you know, did that really great but I wanted to do a show about the relationship of mothers and daughters and how important it is for a child to have you know, the support of a mom behind you that it knows how to be in the shadow rather than pushing a child into what they think they should do. And, um, you know, out of that came, models you know, and daughters. models and daughters. So it's a yeah. competition show? It's a, it is a competition, but it's more, nobody's sent home. They live in the model house on bunk beds, mothers and daughters in bunk beds, no phones during the day. So it really goes back to old-fashioned communicating, having to work through problems together, and building resilient kids. So it's kind of a fascinating process. Nine weeks in a model in a bunk bed with your mom, imagine. What's your role on the show? Well, I'm the host of the show. I kind of coach them through, you know, the difficulties in the relationship. I show them what it's like to, you know, be in a business like that, because obviously any teenager has a kind of a fantasy of wanting to be a supermodel, yet they don't have realistic expectations of what that means. They think seeing a beautiful girl on the cover of a magazine, it's easy, right? But there's a process to it all. Did you enjoy doing it? I loved it. Will they have a second season? I hope so. <laughs> Let's see. When did you realize your daughters were destined to be models? Well, I, you know, when I retired from modeling and became a mom, I was always dressing them up, taking pictures, and Gigi just had that, you know, that thing. She would stare me right into the camera. I couldn't take a, a picture, a bad picture of her. Bella was always so playful, and, you know, she wasn't really into it. Like, mommy, put it away. Gigi's the oldest. <clears throat> And so I kind of always knew that was Gigi's destiny, but I never really wanted her to work until she was 18. Um, and the same for Bella. Um, you know, I took them to New York on their 18th birthday and, and introduced them to five agencies. And I said, you choose the agency you want to be with, what feels right to you, because it's your journey, not my journey. And they've been credited with the bringing back the term supermodel, right? Yeah. And Anwar, your son, is also a model. He, he models. He kind of, you know, goes a little bit in and out. He wants to be a designer. He's designing a jewelry line right now. He's a very spiritual boy that is into crystals and, you know, wanting to heal the planet. And so he's on a very different playing field. He's but the youngest. He's the youngest. But he also, I think, he sees the importance of working on the other side of the camera in order to build business relationships, to see how it all works. So I think it's been a great tool for him to be, to learn to be financial independent at, at an early age. Is male modeling any tougher than female modeling? Well, it's hard for guys, you know, to be 
like for my son to be in front of the mirror and being pulled the hair and the thing, like that's not his thing. So I think that's harder for girls. It's easier to dress up with makeup, you know, so it's different in that sense. Has the industry changed a lot since you started? Yeah. What's the biggest so, change? Well, the biggest change is social media. I mean, when I was 16, I had to live in Paris, Milan, New York, Tokyo, and spend three, four months of my life going around with my little portfolio, you know, nine, 10, 11 go and sees a day Mm -hmm. and show it to the client and pray for a booking. You know, in today's world, you can post one picture that millions of people can see instantly. Is there such a thing as a natural or do you have to be taught modeling? I think you're born with it. I think it's, it's a, you know, everybody comes with a different gift. So I think that you definitely, it's something that you have to be born with. Are the mothers generally pushy? The moms, yes, because we love our children and we want them to succeed and we want them to be perfect, yet that's the complete wrong approach in my point of view. So what advice do you give to the mothers? To, to learn to step back into the shadow of this new creature, the next generation, who's a lot better than we are. I mean, you know what I mean? They can really take this on their own and we have to learn to sit back and allow them to be authentic to who they are as a human being rather than what we think they should be. Are any of the models on your show daughters of models? You know, actually one of the moms kind of tried to model. She's a beautiful girl. She has seven, seven children. So, but the other mothers were just normal moms that really don't know or understand anything about, about the industry. Famous photographers are now being questioned about sexual harassment. Did you face any of that? No, I, I'm lucky that I've never... Never saw it? No, no. Never had a photographer? No, I mean, there's, listen, men and women, you know, some, if you're attracted to somebody, that person attracted you, but, but it was always... But never harassment. But so. never harassment. Always a conversation, hey, I'm not interested in you, or you know what when I mean? When this goes on, do you warn your daughters? I think that this is something that I started very early on in their life teaching them that just because somebody is wearing a batch or they're the head of a school or they're your parents' best friends doesn't mean that it makes them safe. It still means that these are your boundaries and anybody crossing your boundaries is something we need to discuss immediately in that moment. And, you know, that's kind of how I educated them from a very early age on. Did you encourage them to be models? No, I encouraged them to follow their dreams. And, you know, my daughter, Bella, wanted to be a professional equestrian. And I supported that until she got sick with Lyme disease and wasn't able to ride anymore. And, you know, then I sent her to New York to go to college. And I said, come to the agency and let's check this out. And she has an amazing career today. So. Is modeling a long career? I hope so. I think in today's world that we can build a long, sustainable brand. You can yes. model into your 50s, right? Yes. I think so, yeah. Our guest is Yolanda Hadid, and we're discussing Yolanda's remarkable path to success after the break. Her show is Making a Model with Yolanda Hadid. It airs Thursdays at 10 p.m. Eastern, 9 Central on Lifetime. We'll be right back. We're back with Yolanda Hadid. You were born in a small town in the Netherlands. What did you want to be when you were a kid? A professional equestrian. Oh, like your daughter was. Like right? Bella, yes. I was you liked horses and rode horses. Crazy for horses. You still ride? Yes, I just started riding again this year, and it's been something that's part of my life and my children's life. Forever. My daughter's into that, too. What is it about women and horses? You know, I think it's, I think it's just a, a spirit connection that you have with an animal, and to learn to control 2,000 pounds of it. I mean, there's something so powerful about it. And I think for me, the reason I pushed my children into that life early on, because there is no boys, there's no shopping, there's no, you know, mind you, it's, it's an expensive sport, but it's a very healthy thing. I think kids growing up, you know, doing any kind of sports, it keeps them out of trouble and focused on what's yeah, important in life, kidding. right? We share one thing, we lost our father at a young age. I yes. lost him, I was nine. How old were you? Seven. Did that affect your life? Yeah, it, it changed me forever. I mean, I remember sitting at the church in my little town and looking to the side and seeing my mom and my brother and my family all in tears and, you know, like really, really sadness. And I, I, in that moment, made the choice 
going like, okay, I'm the one that has to be tough and strong to take yeah. care of all of them. And I took on this huge responsibility at age seven, while I didn't really give myself the opportunity to, to I, really I, mourn the death I of my angry. father. I got I thought he left me. Yeah, me too. I would. How old was he? He was young, like in his, you know, mine 30s. Mine was 40s. Yeah, mine lay 30s. And that's exactly the question you had, God, why? Why me? I mean, yeah, and why? What, why did you leave me? Yeah. So I've had this complex my Same whole thing. life with yeah. men that, like, Anything abandonment, like if they stop talking to me, I freak out and I go back to being seven years old, right? Yeah, I mean, abandonment. I, the abandonment of it, yeah. So it affects you for the rest of your life. How did you become a model? I was discovered in my small town doing a favor to a girlfriend that was a hairdresser. and What was the favor? She had a hair show and she wanted, I had really long blonde hair and she wanted to make a braided head. And she brought me to Amsterdam. First I'd said no, but then her model was sick, so I went anyway. And as I was in that show, the fashion designer, a very famous Dutch fashion designer said, you know, can you walk the show for me because I need another model? And I'm like, well, I've never walked on heels. I've never worn makeup. I don't really know what I'm supposed to do. And he says, don't worry, just follow the girls. And so I kind of looked what they were doing, copy, copycatted, and that's the day I was discovered, so. I'm still a kid from Brooklyn. Are you still a little Dutch girl? I'm just a little Dutch girl from Holland, for sure. Your ex-husband was an immigrant from Jordan. Yes. Palestine. Did you instill in your children, were you close enough to instill in your children the same ethic? Work ethic? Yeah. Um, yeah, of course. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's Is different. Is he a good father? Yes, he's a good father, yeah. What do you make about all this immigration debate going on? You know, it's hard because I'm an immigrant, right? So it's I'm hard. A, I'm first generation. <laughs> yeah, so we, you know, both my ex-husband and I are. So, you know, I'm, I just feel so grateful to have been given the opportunity to be in this country and to build a life here and have my children here. And I, you know, I will always be grateful for that. Your daughters also speak out on things when they feel like speaking out, right? Yeah, they are very... Righteous, and I I feel that if you're given such an extraordinary platform, you better make sure that you do something with with it rather than posting you know beautiful selfies every day. I, I, it's given to you to have a voice. Like I always say, that why do you think God gave you these platforms at such an early age? And and to keep that in mind every day is to to spread the word about something that you believe in be a role model, and have a voice. Social media now allows models to create a lot of their own exposure. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> is that a good idea? You know, I think it's just the new, I mean, this is the new generation. This is how they, you know, do business. And it, in the beginning, it was really hard for me to understand. Today, I think it's a brilliant way of connecting globally with, you know, with the world. Um, but with that said, it also brings a whole bag of worms of being watched 24-7, having people, you know, judge you from a microscope of people that don't really know you. So there comes a whole emotional, spiritual pressure with that exposure that we, I don't think, really know yet how kids are going to deal with that. Is it boring? And, and days, yes, especially after, you know, 12, 13, 14 a years. in the shoot. Long shoot days, 12, 14 hours days, always traveling, always in, you know, planes, cars, and you know the drill. <laughs> the pay ain't bad. Well, that was, you know, the reason I got into it wasn't because I'd never seen a fashion magazine. I had absolutely no thought ever in my brain to wanting to be a model. But when I learned how much money I could make with it, I started maybe, I'm going like, okay, I'm going to make tally marks of every thousand dollars I'm going to make, and then I'm going to go back to Holland and buy the horses that I dreamt of having <laughs> my whole life. So there was really, I was very money driven of why I got into the business. It was never about glamour or fashion. Are or, your daughters money driven? Yeah, they're good business women. I mean, they they seen me going through my life, and they know that being financially independent and, you know, being in your own power is really important. Coming up with Yolanda, we'll discuss her battle with Lyme disease and where she's found relief. Plus, a little game of if you only knew. We'll be right back. We're back with Yolanda Hadid. She hosts. Making a Model with Yolanda Hadid, airing Thursdays at 10 p.m. 9 Central on Lifetime. You've discussed openly your battle with Lyme disease. 
Mm -hmm. revealing last year the pain was so bad that sometime you thought about suicide. Mm -hmm. What is Lyme disease? Lyme disease is a infection that is brought on by a bite of a tick or mosquitoes and um, you know when you catch it early antibiotics will cure it but if it stays in the system and it becomes a chronic disease it's there is no cure for that. And what are, what are the uh, results of it? What happens to your what happens to you and your body? Well, in the beginning, you feel fluish, headaches, um, you know, joint pain, just really lethargic. And in the beginning, when it first hit you, you're like, oh, it's a flu. Keep pushing through it. Then you feel better for three days, and it hits again. But when you're type A personality, you know, in carpool lane three times a day, single mom of three kids, I'm like, I had no time to be sick or to even try to understand what was wrong with me. Until I got to the point where I just, I could not get out of bed anymore. It really affected my brain. How, are you okay now? Yes, I have been in remission for about seven, eight months and back to work and living life. And How is it treated? Um, you know, I wrote a book about me, which is called Believe Me, where I've discussed all the treatments that I've done. It's a long journey. I can't give you a one-line answer. Are you still on the journey? I am, think I'm at the end of my journey, but nevertheless, I'm still very involved to try to, you know, bring awareness to this disease and hopefully find a cure because there's millions of people, mainly children, who are affected with this every day, and it's, it's a tough one. In boys and girls? Boys and girls, yes. Your daughter have it? My, one of my daughters has it, and my son has it, yes. Really? Mm -hmm. And they're being treated? Yep. But they're lucky they're my kids because I know the road, and, you know, they're still very young, so their immune system is a lot stronger than mine. Did it and affect your second marriage to David Foster? Yes, of course, because I was sick maybe, you know, a year before I got married. I was already not feeling myself, and, yeah. Okay, we play a little game of If You Only Knew. Yes. We ask you questions and you don't have to answer them. Okay. <laughs> Who was your childhood celebrity crush? I didn't really have it. No? No, I didn't really have a crush. Well, little people in Netherlands, where, what are you? No, because I wasn't into <laughs> one, my, my it, was, it was my horses. I wasn't into <laughs> TV and all that, so. Secret talent. The ability to love everybody. Yeah, you, you have that. Yes. Guilty pleasure. Hagen does ice cream with milk. You know, Hagen does is not from the Netherlands. No, I know, but I from love New the Jersey. ice cream. I from know. New Jersey. I know. Weirdest job you ever had? Probably hand modeling. Yeah, what make, oh, you have lovely hands. Yeah, but then you, like, they cut off your face and your hand is hanging in some <laughs> box. I mean, it's really uncomfortable, but yeah. What's the biggest risk you've ever taken? Um, probably driving to Mexico for stem cells. Oh, you got stem cells? Did mm -hmm. that help? You know, it's, no, it wasn't a cure, no. Who would you trade places with for a day? Um, Michelle Obama. Good choice. Something you wish you were better at? Maybe patience, being patient. Last time you were starstruck? I don't have that gene. Something you're afraid of? I have no fears. Having okay. made it through the last seven years of my life, I don't think I have you fears. You don't fear dying? No, not anymore, no. Best compliment you ever got? Probably the ability to share my heart. Also, I would guess what a good mother you are. Yeah, yeah true. Strangest fan encounter. Oh, you must have had some of those. Being at the underwear section, like an underwear section in an apartment store and people wanting to take pictures, like... In your underwear? No, just standing around looking at bras and stuff and going, like, can we take pictures? Like, can we do it somewhere else, not here? What's something people get wrong about you? I think that they think I'm much more fancy than I really are. Deep in my heart, I'm just a farm girl from Holland and that's where I feel happiest and best. What do they get wrong about your kids? That maybe they're spoiled and they're not, or that life, this career came easy to them, and it really didn't have anything to do with me. It really. Where did they live? In New York. You worry about them? I sometimes worry about their safety, yeah. What's something people get wrong about the Netherlands? I don't know. I, what do I hear about the Netherlands? I mean, I think we're pretty cool. We're, well, it's very open. It's very open. It's very... Amsterdam is one of the open cities in the world. Yeah, right? I mean, I think it's... I mean, I love the culture. I still go back and go like, wow, it's, it's amazing. Pot is legal. Oh, is I mean, they prostitution. Re prostitution is legal. We have a very low rape 
you yeah. know, raid because of it. So, yeah, I think we're pretty open-minded. And Tell me something people don't know about you. You know, I think I'm a pretty open book. I mean, maybe that I'm an ultimate romantic, and I just, I love love. Are you in love now? I'm in love now, yes. Are you going to get married? I don't think so. I haven't been very successful at that, so I think <laughs> I'm so going to leave that. Love is okay. Love is beautiful, yes. You want to tell me who? No. <laughs> okay. Yolanda will answer your social media questions in our final segment, Making a Model with Yolanda Hadid airs Thursdays at 10 p.m. 9 central on Lifetime. More after this. We're back with Yolanda Hadid. We have some social media questions for you. Uh, Jeannie H91, how much would you say your symptoms have improved since 2013? Oh, a lot. 22, yeah. I mean, 2013, I wasn't functioning. I was in bed, you know, probably 20 hours out of the day. So, yes, I'm back to living a normal life. I go to work, I run a farm, feed the cows, the horses, get my eggs, I run a vegetable garden, and I'm back in life. So it's, you know, 180 degrees you for stayed sure. in bed because you couldn't walk around? Couldn't function, couldn't get out of bed, couldn't think. I mean, I lost the ability to read, I lost the ability to watch TV, to remember the alphabet, couldn't write. It, it was a tough journey coming back from that. Stan Sullivan on our blog, are each of your kids charting a different path in the modeling industry? Yeah, I mean, I think that they're both very different and authentic to who they are. and just because they're sisters doesn't make them the same human being, so they're both on their own path. Did you have a lot of contracts with companies? When I was younger, yeah. I mean, I modeled for many years and made a life here. I'm still here. I always thought I would go back to Holland, and here I am. <laughs> do you do any modeling of your own now? No, not really, no. Why not? You're gorgeous. No, I mean, I could, but like I said, I've, I've kind of lost seven years of my life, and I'm just coming back, but I think the next seven, I'm going to make up for the last seven and get back into the swing of things. Would you do a modeling gig? Yes, of course, yeah. Uh, Louisa Gallagher, are you still close with any of your Real Housewives co-stars, and do you miss the show? You know, I, I don't miss the show because... I got sick the first season I went on the show, so it was it has been a struggle for me for many years. Um, the only girl that I'm still in contact with is Erica. We're, you know, that's the one that I brought on the show, and we're still good friends and talk all the time. But, you know, I hold that whole show experience in very high regards. It's given me a platform, you know, to, to bring awareness to a disease that is absolutely so close to my heart and I'm very passionate about at this point. So it's, everything in life happens for a reason and the show has only been good to me even though it was a really rough journey. Do we know how many people are affected by Lyme disease? I mean it's it's a worldwide epidemic so millions. It is? Yes. Yes. And it's caused by the tick of a mosquito? By a tick bite. Yeah so when a lot of kids have it because they play outside in the grass, in the bushes, riding horses. I mean, that's how we got it. And they take an antibiotic. If you catch it right away, yes. Otherwise, there is no cure for Lyme disease. You are best known for your famous children. Is that okay with you? I just, it doesn't matter. I'm, you know, I'm, I'm, I know my self-worth in the world, and I've, you know... It doesn't matter. I, I, that's okay, yes. The, the answer right I'm there. very proud of them. And if I'm just Gigi Bella and Anwar's mom, that's just fine with me. Did their last name help them get into the industry? Absolutely not. I don't think their last name has anything to do with their success in the industry. In other words, you have to be what you are, right? Yeah, you have to be authentic. I mean, I, I opened the door to an agency, but after they got an agency, it, it was all up to them of how hard they wanted to work, how hard they wanted to invest in their career. Their last name of their dad, who isn't even in the fashion world or connected to that world, you know, didn't help them in any way. And you keep them grounded, don't you? Yes, I keep them on the farm, riding their horses <laughs> and doing their thing, yes. Great pleasure. Nice to see you. Thank you so much. Yolanda Hadid. She hosts Making a Model with Yolanda Hadid. It airs Thursdays at 10 p.m. 9 central on Lifetime. You can always find me on Twitter at King's Things, and I'll see you next time.